Hey guys, so I'm going to talk a little bit in this video about a very inexpensive lens that I tried. Um, so a while back now, um, when there was a little bit of uh, uh, back and forth between uh, myself and a bunch of people about uh, inexpensive equipment and blah blah blah, um, I made the statement that hey, if somebody was willing to give me something inexpensive, I would give it a shot and give it a fair break. So. As it turns out, uh, maybe a couple weeks after that, and I don't think related to me saying that because I never said it was, uh, a company contacted me. They're they're like a, I mean, once I went and looked at their site, they have like everything, uh, you know. So it's kind of, they kind of have cheap everything, and they've got uh, one of the things they have is camera stuff and lenses. And this person uh, reached out to me, the salesperson, and they said, uh, you know, well, first they wanted to advertise on my channel, and I don't said I don't advertise things that I don't believe in, so I'm not going to do that. But if you want to send me something. This is a perfect opportunity for me to try something inexpensive and do a review of it. So, uh, we, we she, you know, she suggested this lens here, which is a, um, let's say, 32 millimeter uh, f 1.6 uh, lens. The company written on it is Village, um, and it is uh, for APS-C, so it's a, you know, it's for a cop camera, so it's like a normal lens, uh, Sony that is, and being that I use a a Sony 6500 to shoot a lot of the videos, not these videos, but the other videos, I thought, hey, perfect, you know, I'll, I'll take some pictures with it, maybe, um, but I'll shoot some video with it for sure, because why not, you know, have a normal little lens. Um, so we were in, I gave her my address or whatever, and she sent it on away, and, you know, she came in this little bag, in a box, of course, which I threw away. Um, so I did, I did tell her I would put the link to it in the description, so you can check down there if you decide that you want this lens after this. Um, so... It arrived, and it was in, like I say, in a box, and in this bag, and inside a plastic bag. And in the, inside of that plastic bag uh, was basically coated in oil. So um, already that wasn't a good sign. I'm like, this lens is oil all over it. That's not really something that I want to see. Um, but I opened it, you know, um, and took out the paper towel and kind of wiped it off. And, uh, you know, not the, the front and rear elements were fine because it had caps on. Um, and I tried to move everything, and it was very stiff, which, of course, because the oil leaked out of it. So... So I right, well, give it a shot. I kind of played with it a little bit, and I was able to use it enough. And I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll still give this a shot if it doesn't leak everywhere. So I kind of wiped it off, so I knew that it was totally clean. And I let it sit out for a little bit to make sure no other oil leaked from it, and it didn't. So I was like, all right, I'll give it a shot. Uh, I put it on my Sony the next time I had a chance, and I kind of was I was trying to. I thought, man, this lens is seventy dollars. I know it's not going to uh, perform like a very expensive lens, and nobody should expect that it should. Um, but maybe it'd be cool to do something like, you know, like maybe it'll, maybe it'll flare really interesting or do something like that for stills. So I kind of put the lens on and aimed it at lights and stuff, and it, it didn't really flare that interestingly. I mean, it didn't flare that much at all, which is actually pretty good. Um, it was just kind of, you know. So I said, well, then I'm just going to go with my original plan and use it for video. Um, to which I had a couple of uh, shoots set up that didn't come through, blah, blah, so some time passed. Um, but uh, eventually, so this is now going on for a couple of months, um, I eventually did get a chance to shoot with it a few weeks back, um, about three, two or three weeks ago, depending on when this video comes out, and um, put it on the, the, the camera, and I said, I'm going to shoot with these, and actually the video of Erica um, with the backlight, uh, which I will link here, I think that's where it is, maybe it's over there, um, I will, uh, I shot with this, put this on the camera, used it as the only lens, just went in there and shot with it, um, it worked out perfectly because my Sony was having weird uh, autofocus issues with the lens that I'm using, the Sony lens. Uh, surely I pressed some weird button or something because it was doing a lot of weird shit. So I was like, you know what? I'll use my no focus lens. Um, I think it did a pretty good job. I mean, for that purpose, uh, and also comparing it to the lens that I was using, which is the 18 to 105 from Sony, which is not a super high end lens. It's probably like a, I don't know, four or five hundred dollar lens for a super, you know, for a long zoom with a fixed aperture. So that's pretty inexpensive. Um, it was it, it performed admirably. I mean, it was okay. Um, it was a little bit stiff um, in the focus, so I feel like for stills that would probably bother me. But being that it's a video, um, you know, I think that it was totally fine because I focused it and just left it there. You know, I didn't the videos I shot anyways. If I was trying to follow somebody, that might be a bit of a pain in the butt because it wasn't firm in like in like a good way. You know, like like a Leica. Like a Leica lenses are kind of a little firm to turn, so you can really feel them. But this was more like well, the oil leaked out of it. Now, of course, I did. I should point out that I did uh, say that to uh, to my rep there, um, and I'll show you the lens again. I did say that to the rep, and she was surprised, um, of course. And she was, oh, that doesn't normally happen. Okay, you know, I have to believe, take them on a word for that. Um, 
and that was all fine. So I used it once, and I was like, all right, this is not bad, you know, and you guys will see in the video um, that it came out fine. I actually shot two videos. That one is going to uh, be out by the time this comes out. There is another one with Erica that I shot that I'm still editing, so if you're watching this video um, in the future and uh, you see two videos listed, that's because the second one is already out. Um, I'm still editing that one. So it did a good job. I, I should point out, too, it doesn't have any information in the back, so there's no, you know, uh, no electronic... Uh, things, but that doesn't really matter. I mean, it's a mirrorless camera. You set it to, to, um, you know, to see the actual exposure, not the other way you can set them. And then you just kind of adjust your exposure till it looks right. Um, that's how I did it anyways. Um, it is F1.6. I mean, I didn't test it against faster lenses. I don't have a fast lens. to so know if it's really F1.6, but, um, you know, whatever. It, it was fine. I shot it, I think, to 5.6. It wasn't bad. You know, the minimum focus here is, is, uh, I guess that's feet, is uh, like, man, like meters, 0.25, so 25 centimeters, that's pretty close, right? Um, but I didn't use it like that, and I don't think it's a macro lens, truly, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't use it like that. Um, but then we come to kind of the, <laughs> this has been the good so far, kind of the bad. So I took it out the other day, it was maybe three days ago, four days ago, maybe a little bit longer, um, and put it on the Sony and I said, I'm going to shoot some stills with it. I was doing some, some kind of more artistic stuff. So I didn't really like care if they came out super sharp or whatever. I was like, I just had a model in there. She knew we were going to be playing around. So I pulled up the Sony, which I normally don't use for stills, but I pulled it out and I put this on there and I started uh, getting some stuff ready. And then the model said to me, what's that on your face? And there was like black on my face and black on my fingers. And I looked around for everything. I could not figure out where it came from. The only thing I think is it came from the lens, although I could not get it to happen again, but now I'm thinking to myself, okay, you know what? This is a $70 lens. I'm not getting paid to do this. This is my personal camera that could be ruined. I'm not going to uh, use this lens anymore, you know? I think probably looking back on it, well, as soon as it came and it was all oiled up, I should have just said, send me another lens or I won't do the, the review, but I didn't, so, you know, that's on me. Um, I did reach out to them and they were a little bit disappointed. I said, listen, you know, because maybe this lens was broken or whatever in transit, uh, I could just not do this. We could just pretend like it never happened. Because um, I hate to, to, to judge something on the fact that this might be a one-off. Um, but they said, no, no, put, just say what you're going to say about the lens. Um, because we'd rather have that than nothing. So, there you go. I mean, I think that the company themselves uh, were nice. Um, I mean, if you go to a website where they sell everything from, like, toasters to lenses to, you know... Uh, you know, whatever else. They might sell wires and stuff. It, you can't expect that you're going to get the best in quality photo equipment. I mean, this is clearly one of those, uh, you know, lenses that, again, it's marked Vill Village. There's probably 15 different versions of this by other names that are all somewhere around $70. Um, it's like an inexpensive lens. I mean, I would, I would say this. If you want to mess around with stuff, I think these kind of things are really fun. If you tell me I'm buying this because I don't have money to afford a better lens, then I'm going to call you on that and say that's just not the truth. Because I guarantee you that I could find a Sony 35-ish uh, lens that would fit on a Sony, like an old one used from a re reputable source, that I could that you could get. That wouldn't work electronically with it. It would be manual focus just like this. And it might not be f1.6, but it would probably be like f2 or even 2.8, but it'll be from like a Nikon or a Pentax or one of these companies that we know and have been around a long time. And also, if the lens is 15 years old and it's still working, that tells you something about the lens. So, that's my feeling on these things. I, I haven't changed my mind. Uh, <laughs> maybe it took a long time before I changed my mind. I think that what you pay for at equipment is, like, your durability and your re reliability and, and those kinds of things. You know, I don't care about... I mean, I do care, but I don't care in the sense of reviewing because I'm not that kind of person. I'm not going to do this kind of reviews. I don't shoot wall charts to see what's sharper and chromatic aberration. And yeah, that all matters. But in the end, I want something that's going to be reliable and it's going to work. If I can't trust that this lens is not going to like put grease on my sensor every time I put it on the camera or like fall apart or whatever, I, I'm just not going to use it. I'd just much rather use something from a reputable brand that I shouldn't say reputable per se because I'm not saying they're not reputable, but something from a brand that I, has a history. So. That's basically my uh, my summary of this lens. Again, I'll put the link uh, in the description that they gave me to copyright to the store so you can check it out. Um, I'm looking at the aperture pretty closed. I mean, you can't see it, obviously. Uh, pretty closed down, and it's kind of 
strangely shaped. You know, it's not round, but again, I wouldn't expect a $70 lens to have a really nice round aperture. I think that comes down to the things that I've been saying. It's like, you've got to approach things realizing what you're buying. If you're buying something that's inexpensive, you know, it is what it is. I mean, don't expect every time, practically every time in your life, let's give you this advice, <laughs> that somebody comes to you and gives you an offer that you think is too good to be true, it probably is. So when somebody tells you the $70 lens is as good as a $300 lens or a $1,200 lens, it's not. It's just not, you know. Is it usable? Could people make photos with it? Did I make those two videos and did they come out fine and you probably wouldn't have even really noticed the difference? Yeah, sure, you know. But in normal, safe situations, cheap stuff will get you by. But I still think that you're better off going with brands that have been around, that have a good reputation, um, and they have a good reputation for a long time. That's the important part. A lot of things are fads. There's things that pop up and it's like everybody's using it, and then three years later people are like, why do we even use that thing? That's why I try to stick with things that have been around for a while um, and that have a, a decent amount of like information out there in the world. You know, It's like, oh, okay, this is actual a, a thing. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my uh, cheap lens roundup. I mean, if there is a cheap lens that you guys use that you want to recommend, I'll even go buy something. Um, I mean, they gave this to me for free, obviously. Uh, because I'm curious, like I, I'm not opposed to using inexpensive stuff, um, but usually I want to use something that has uh, where I'm in that you know that mode. I'm usually looking for something that has a like, character, like I have a really super old like Russian uh, made uh, lenses that that are in the Leica screw mount. I have a few of those for my Leica that are like really kind of funky, um, and they're super cheap. Uh, although I think they've got it on price because they became trendy. But again. Um, it is what it is. And those are cool, and I get them I get them for a certain reason. They weren't meant to be as good as my Leica lens. They were meant to be cool lenses that I use. So hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, let me know what, what you guys use. I mean, actually, I'd be curious uh, because I do have the Sony, and I wouldn't mind getting a 35. If people are using a 35 on their Sony APS, um, what lens they're using, um, and, uh, you know, if they like it. And also, if there's any, like I said, cheap lenses uh, you guys think I should look into to try or, or that kind of stuff, um, you know, I'll go for it. Why not? Uh, so thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to subscribe if you have not already. Um, and I'll see you next time.